Is it possible that we can have some quiet in this place today as we begin as we begin our Tom Kennedy function? If we can have some quiet, please. Now it's up to you if you want to stand or if you want to sit. For those that know me, I'm non-religious, but I do believe in my faith in God. If you are a Democrat in this place, Y'all look like you're tired. If you are a Democrat in this place, say, I'm a Democrat. I'm a Democrat. If you believe in justice in this place, say, I believe in justice. I believe in justice. If you believe in equality today, say, I believe in equality. I believe in equality. Now stand up on your feet and join me in this invocation, please. Can we have quiet while I give this prayer, please? Please bow your head and close your eyes. Precious Lord, we bless your name. We thank you for your son who came into Jerusalem on a donkey. Lord, we know that he rode in not on a political party, but he rode in on love, equality, justice, and dignity. Lord, we know that he championed the undeserved as we do in this place today. Lord, we invoke you today. We invoke the spirituality of coming in on that donkey of love. Lord, we ask that the people in this place have that spiritual intake to be able to ride on the donkey of justice and equality for all of God's children. We invoke you in this place today. Those that believe in the redemption, please say amen. amen. Now, did y'all like that donkey thing? Yeah, y'all liked that, didn't you? You forgot Jesus came to Jerusalem on a donkey, didn't you? No political party, but it means something. You have a seat. Amen. Okay, thank you, Bishop. Thank you, Bishop. Now, because our folks come, come from a long way, um, I want to have Senator Rosenberg say a few, a few words. Senator? Well, good evening, everyone. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me to come down and say a few words as we celebrate the extraordinary life of my former colleague and friend, Tom Kennedy. And uh, I know Senator Pacheco is here, and I'm uh, not sure if you're going to get to speak, but uh, just want to uh, ask you to give a warm welcome to Senator Mark Pacheco of Taunton. And of course, your Senator, Mr. Brady, right here from Brockton. Thank you, Mike. So I consider it an absolute honor and a privilege to have known and worked with uh, Tom for the number of years that I got to do so, first in the House and then in the Senate. And uh, he was a truly remarkable public servant. And he faced uh, many uh, uphill struggles in his life, as we all know. But he conquered every situation that was put in front of him because he was a person of enormous energy, integrity, and capacity. And as a member of the Senate, we knew that we could rely upon him as a solid Democrat to do what was right for working people and to do what was right not only for today but to build for the future. And you know that because you know the many things that he did as an elected official here to improve this community and to improve the lives of the people right here. But I also want to celebrate Tom not just as a public servant, effective, as he was, but also as a friend, because he had just the most enormous capacity for compassion and concern for others. And we saw it played out over and over and over again in the Senate, both in the work that he did, but even more importantly, how he treated other people. And I spent many an evening with Tom at various kinds of functions, places that I went into and would not have expected to see Tom, but he was there, and he was there to support the cause and the people who were being uh, considered that evening at that event. And at event after event after event, he would show up and he would be present. He wouldn't just show up to shake a few hands and say hello to a few people. He would come and he would spend the whole evening and he would listen and he would meet people, he'd hear their stories, he'd hear of their, about their lives, and he would share and commiserate with them about the challenges that they uh, faced in their lives. 
So I was an enormous fan of Tom's. And uh, I have to say also that we miss Tom not only as a public servant and as a friend, but also as a storyteller. There is no one that I have ever served with in the legislature, and I've served with a lot of people who could tell a tall one, <laughs> but no one could tell a story like Tom. In fact, he would tell a story after a story after a story after a story. Yes, I see some of you have been on those long evenings with Tom. And, but the thing that I loved about that was that it was always so relaxing and so genuine. And then every so often in the middle of one of his stories, he would sort of pivot and he'd talk about something serious and talk about an issue or something that sort of grew out of what he was talking about, but not exactly, but he was planting a seed. And then he'd pivot back and tell some more stories, and it was just very seamless. And don't you know, a week later, or two weeks later, or three weeks later, we'd be in caucus, and he'd be talking about a bill or an amendment, and bingo, what he taught us in the story two weeks earlier, three weeks earlier, seemingly having no connection to what was going on at the moment, he was planting the seeds so that we knew and understood and would think about this idea that he had, this need that he had seen, and he'd bring it round, and before you knew it, he had the Senate in the palm of his hand voting on something that he thought was important, sometimes for his community, sometimes for all of the people of the Commonwealth. So on behalf of all of the members of the Senate, I want to thank each and every one of you for being here tonight to participate in a celebration and remembrance of Tom and his amazing public service career and his contributions to this community and to this region. And I'll close as the bishop uh, offered a few words um, in a spiritual uh, sense. I will too, as I close, by saying that uh, we are taught by scholars of, of ancient times that you're not expected to complete the work in your lifetime. Neither must you fail to do your part. Tom Kennedy did more than his part. He changed a little bit of the world every day through his caring, his compassion, and his effective leadership. And for that, we will always remember him. And those of us who had the privilege of knowing him will always miss him and remember him. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. You know, when I became chair of the city committee about a year ago, I pulled out one of the first signs I made with Tom about maybe four years ago, you know, first election. And uh, it's out there in the back. You know, I've still got that sign that it was hanging out in my garage for years. So this mic keeps on cacking out on me, so I'm sorry. So. In any case, um, one of the first things I wanted to do is have a Tom Kennedy event. Well, here we are. It's going to be an annual thing, folks, so we'll be here every year. So I want to thank the senator for coming down, and uh, I want to thank Mr. Brady, Senator Brady. You want to say a few words? Well, I'd, I'd like to confer a uh, lot of stuff for us. Suzanne okay. Suzanne, I'm sorry. I know you can drive a long way, and... I apologize for that. The speaker might be going in off and on, so I'll have to warn you. Okay. Well, th thank you very much, Steve, and thank you, uh, thank you, Senator, for uh, allowing me to just share a couple of thoughts with you. Um, you mentioned that I was going to be that I came a long way. Well, shortly I will not be coming a long way to Brockton because I am moving to the town of Easton. So I'm looking forward. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that very much so that I can spend more time with people uh, with whom I grew up and with whom I share so many, uh, so many values and, and so many memories. Thank you. Thank you. Um, it, I think it was really um, appropriate that we opened this evening with a prayer from Bishop Branch because among um, all of the other fine qualities that uh, Senator Kennedy possessed and all of the things that motivated him, compassion uh, for others, respect for others, uh, I think that it's really appropriate that we remember that they were rooted 
in a very strong faith, a faith in God that helped him to surmount difficulties the likes of which I cannot imagine on a daily basis for years and years and years. And he served, uh, yes, as, a, uh, as an example of leadership, but he also just served to inspire me by the power of his example. Uh, carrying that cross, uh, if you will, uh, without ever losing faith in his God or in the people uh, that he served and his family who surrounded him. Um, I was very delighted that we had a couple of things in common. Our, our time in the House of Representatives was one of those things. Uh, but going back even further, we had both attended Cardinal Spellman uh, high School, and that was just a, a, a lovely bond that we that we had. Uh, he was very devoted to that school as as I am, and it 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 caused us to be closer than I think we would have been uh, otherwise. And it was one of the reasons that bond, uh, as well as my respect for him, was one of the reasons where the, uh, that I asked him when my name was being. Uh, uh, put in nomination at the Democratic State Convention in 2010 when I was running for auditor, uh, that, that he was the one who put my name in, in nomination. And I really appreciated that. You know that he did not like the limelight. He, he was very anxious about the role that he was going to play, uh, but he accepted he accepted the invitation, and he did such a beautiful job. And I'm so grateful to him for the friendship that he's shown to me through the through the years. And it's wonderful that we are remembering him th in this in this way. I also want to just say a couple of words about uh, the the young man that we are honoring tonight. <laughs> so, Argy, I congratulate you for this wonderful honor. You too have been a superlative leader, not just here in Brockton on behalf of the firefighters, but across the state now in your new role. You have the respect of every member of the, the legislature whom I've ever, ever talked to, as well as their affection because you just are a man of integrity and you are a man of compassion. And I'm just delighted that you are here this evening and that we are honoring you in this way. So congratulations to you and have a wonderful evening all. I just have, I do have one question though. So who here is going to the Democratic State Convention on June 3rd? Excellent. I look forward to seeing you all there. We have a lot of work ahead of us, uh, and I know you're all ready, as I am, to, uh, to do it. So look forward to seeing you there on June 3rd. Thank you, Suzanne. I appreciate the comments. Uh, do I have, Mike, would you want to say a few words? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And before I start, I know uh, Representative Claire Cronin is on her way um, she got stuck in traffic like all of us did. And I want to, again, thank our Senate President Stan Rosenberg for not only coming today in his busy schedule, but also being the leader of our Senate because without good leadership at the Senate level, we would get no work done. And we're facing very difficult economic times, and we know how important revenue is to not only the city of Brockton, but the whole Commonwealth. And we have great leadership in our Senate President Stan Rosenberg, so let's give him another round of applause. And our other good friend, Senator Mark Pacheco, who is a president pro temp who lives just a couple blocks down from here in Taunton. But uh, he's been a good friend to us. He's been very active across the Commonwealth on environmental issues, and I serve on a, a few committees with him. He's been a good friend and a good supporter of the working people of the Commonwealth. And uh, thank you, Mark, for coming down today, Senator Pacheco. And also, uh, we have a thank you to our great auditor who, as she mentioned, went to Cardinal Spum with Senator Kennedy, uh, Auditor Suzanne Bump. Thank you again, and thank you for speaking. Let's give her a round of applause. We also have, from Senator Warren's office, Connor Heinland. Thank you for coming down. We have our Register of Deeds, our good friend John Buckley here. We have our Register of Probate, Matt McDonough. Thank you, Matt, for coming down. 
And I know we're going to speak later because we've got to honor our good friend Archie Gormley, but Representative Jerry Cassidy is here. <laughs> and our good friend Representative Michelle Dubois, thank you for coming today. And former state rep uh, Fran Merrill is here, even though he lost his wonderful mother today. And, and uh, it's a sad day, but he still took time out of his family schedule to come down today. So thank you to Fran Merrill, and if you can keep him in his prayers. <laughs> and we have city councilors Dennis Ianieri and Shana Barnes. Thank you for both coming. And, and former Mayor Wynn Fowler, who serves in the city council. Thank you. We have another great friend from our neighbors next door in Whitman, a former colleague in the State House of Representatives, Emmett Hayes. Thank you for coming today, who, who is also a great friend of Tom Kennedy's. Uh, we have from the school committee, Tim Sullivan. Thank you, Tim. We, we have the chairman of the Southeastern Regional School Committee, Mark Lindy. Thank you, Mark, for coming. From the Hanson Town Committee and former President of the Brockton Education Association, a good friend and supporter to us all, Joe O'Sullivan. Thank you. <laughs> and some other great friends from the Plymouth Bristol Central Labor Council, Mark Flaherty and Jimmy Pinkham. Thank you both for coming down. And thank you for all, all you do helping support our working families. And from the Mass Nurses Association, Lisa Field. Lisa. Thank you to all the nurses for all the work you do. And one of the most important men, other than Tom Kennedy and, of course, Archie, came all the way from the north side of Brockton, but he actually lived in Ward 5, part of the Fighting Fifth, and it wasn't for him, I wouldn't have gotten involved with politics, Mr. Paul Red Sullivan. Paul, thank you. Thank you, Paul. And also from the State Committee, Alan Pesovich is here, and thank you for all the work you do. And our good friends from the State Committee, Donna Smith and Robert Cassie, thank you for coming down as well. Thank you for all the work you do. And our other two friends, the dynamic duo that are now on the Democratic National Committee, Melvin and Tina Poindexter, thank you very much for coming down. And there were once constituents of mine in Ward 2 in Brockton, too. They got smart and moved up to the North Shore, though, so. <laughs> uh, also, we have a few candidates here running. Uh, Jean Bradley Derencourt running for City Council at Large. Thank you for coming. <laughs> Ward 6 candidate, John Drewers. And who is that there? Joanne Zygmunt. Joanne Zygmunt. Zig and yeah, John Jasinski, that they had the spelling yeah. wrong. Sorry about that. And then Council at Large candidate Gary Keith, thank you very much for coming down. <laughs> I did say Jerry Cassie, thank yeah, you. Yeah, you did. But um, I'm going to hold up because we have some presentations and we're still waiting for Representative Claire Cronin to come down. But I want to thank everybody for coming here tonight. I know it's a very busy schedule. There's an event in Plymouth tonight. There's an event with the Coalition of Social Justice down in Westport. And it's a warm, sunny day, which we haven't seen much sunshine. So I know a lot of residents would rather be probably out in the sunshine. But we know how important this is because we have to elect good Democrats. And we've seen what has happened at the state level. The, the person in the corner office, the governor's office, might come across as a nice guy, but he's cut so many funding mechanisms for our district, cutting school funding for Brockton. That's going to be decimating our school funding in Brockton. Cutting two college initiatives for Brockton. One, a college collaboration that was going to go in downtown Brockton and the Allied Health Center at Massoy Community College. Cutting school funding for Taunton. Without Mark Pacheco's fight in Taunton, there wouldn't be a community college there, but they were going to put it in the downtown. He put it in a mall, which is not cost effective, and it doesn't help the downtown. Cut community colleges in Framingham and down the Cape, and they continue to cut, cut, cut. It all sounds good. Nobody likes to pay taxes. I don't like to pay taxes. But without the revenue, we wouldn't be able to do the things we've done here. And Brockton has been recognized as one of the best school systems in the Commonwealth. But without the funding from the local government, our city councils, and our school committee, and the state government, we wouldn't be able to survive. And there's been major cuts across the board. Our roads, as we know, are in deplorable condition. We need money for transportation and energy. And I know our Senate President, Mark Pacheco, have been leaders on more efficiency, efficient renewable energy. 
to try to get away from the fossil fuels and bring clean energy projects to our Commonwealth and to create jobs, which is very important. We've got to create jobs for our citizens because people are struggling out there. So I'm going to keep quiet on that note. We are fighting for you, but I, I want to pass it on to Jerry Cassie because we are waiting for Claire Cronin, and we have some presentations. And again, thank you to our good friend Archie Gormley, the head of the Local 144. He, he was one of the closest, as we all were, but one of the closest friends to Tom Kennedy and always spent a lot of time advocating on behalf of Brockton and the fire department and worked hand in hand with Tommy. And, and um, we couldn't have asked for a better person to receive the first Tom Kennedy Award. But um, he's also been a good friend. And there's a place in, place in heaven for, for you because you put up with me. So, you know. <laughs> And I want to also thank Tom's family for being here because you've also been a great friend and family to all of us in Brockton. And thank you for all you've given back to the community of Brockton as well. So I'm going to ask for Representative Cassie to come up to say a few words. And I didn't want to forget our former County Commissioner, Jack Redden, who's born and raised in Brockton. Thank you for coming tonight as well. Oh, well, he's, he's going to get up and, and speak too. I, I was not going to forget... Our president of the FLCO, Steve Toma, but before we're going to bring him up, I just want to bring Jerry Cassie up to say a few quick words. And Steve is our guest speaker tonight, but I'm hoping Claire Cronin gets here, so uh, she should be here shortly. Did we just get a call? Okay. Yes, please. Because she, she, she is the first woman, by the way, first woman chairperson of the Judiciary Committee in the history of our Commonwealth. And it's... And it's and it's great news that she's the first chairman, but it, as much progressiveness as we have done in Massachusetts, we still have to do a lot more work because it's long overdue that we have great women in place, and we should have had a woman in the White House. Unfortunately, things went the other way. So, Jerry, Representative Cassie, would you come up, please, and say a few words? Thank you, Miss. Thank you Mike. Just a few words. Um, I think Archie's wife belongs in heaven. That's what, uh, you know, dealing with Archie. My goodness gracious, you know. But uh, no, it's, it's truly an honor to be here, and uh, I want to thank uh, uh, Claire, uh, Tommy's uh, wife, Claire, and uh, my uh, my relatives, Peggy and uh, Maureen, for uh, being here, and uh, all, all the Dem good Democrats here. Um, I was going through some pictures the other day, and I, I found this uh, this being uh, Throwback Thursday, and there was a picture. It's on the uh, tables there, um, 1983, M May 25th, and it's a picture of Tommy getting sworn in with John Waldron in back of him. And um, uh, uh, John Kerry was up, uh, Lieutenant Governor at the time. Governor Dukakis was swearing in Tommy, and it was Speaker, uh, Speaker McGee. I say that because we can't forget where we were, uh, because when we move forward, Tommy was very instrumental in getting the, uh, the uh, courthouse built downtown. If it wasn't for him being the Vice Chairman of Ways and Means, that, uh, that would never have been built. The library, the extension, uh, uh, that was all his doing. Uh, being uh, so powerful that he was. And as the Senate President says, you know, Tommy would be uh, talking to people all through the night, through the night, and through the night. I was with him <laughs> through those nights, you know, quite, quite a bit, as we know, Claire, as Claire was also. Uh, but uh, he was truly one of my uh, heroes in uh, saying that, that uh, it's an honor and privilege to be here. Um, uh, Tom was a true Democrat, just like Red, Red Sullivan is. And uh, we know that uh, Tommy's up there in heaven uh, smiling down on us, making sure that we do get money for our school funding. Uh, the DA's office, the parking garage that's uh, uh, hopefully going to be downtown uh, Brockton. Uh, we're advocating for you at, at the State House. I know on the school department side, we're uh, trying to get more funding. We got a quarter of a million dollars for uh, uh, the school department. But uh, that's the issue right now. Uh, I remember years ago, the city of Brockton was uh, just like Chelsea, they were going to be in receivership. If it wasn't for um, Richie Volk, who was uh, chairman of Ways, Ways and Means at the time, he helped us get out of that with Tom Kennedy, who was a uh, true hero to, uh, to me. But uh, I just want to say thank you very much. And it's Michelle. Representative Dubois. All right. You know, I really, really am fortunate that I've got such a great legislative delegation. It's all friends up here. So thank you. 
Hi, everybody, and I'm so honored to be here and feel a little um, small in relation to a lot of the folks that spoke before me with relation to their relationship with Tom Kennedy. I've known um, Tom since I was a kid in his leadership role that he's played in Brockton and, um, for, for so many years and was always um, proud of him and what he did for Brockton that no one else could do. Um, and proud of his ability to overcome his diversity, I mean, and, I mean his disadvantage in life and his disability, um, and be able to um, do more with his life than I probably will be able to do um, with all he faced. And I think that Brockton had a very wonderful role model in him and also um, a great leader and in so many ways a hero for Brockton because so many people in Brockton face so many disadvantages. And when you can see someone who succeeds against all odds and they're, they're part of your team, it makes you feel better with what you're gonna be able to do in your life when you face um, struggles. So I'm happy to be here tonight and I'm happy to be your state representative and I work hard every day to try to just um, do a certain percentage of what um, Senator Kennedy was able to do for the city. Can you not hear me? That's the best I can do. Okay. Thank you guys. The mic fades out. Yeah. I, I just want to let you know that our good representative Claire Cronin is just arriving, but I also want to thank the committee for all the work they did. Peg Curtis probably took this mostly by herself, so let's give Peg Curtis a round of applause. And, and Jackie Bonarigo, who helped out as well. And Steve Kelly, our chairman and president of the Brockton Democratic City Committee. And all the other volunteers who help us out with the city committee. Thank you very much. So now we're going to get our president of the AFL-CIO up here. No, well, first of all, clear, clear Cronin first to say a few words. Clear, come on. Representative Cronin. You've got to speak into the mic, otherwise it doesn't work, I found out. Better late than never. Uh, sorry. Yes, it was the Boston traffic. So I'm very proud to be here tonight, very happy. It's a great turnout. Great to see all our colleagues. The auditor, Suzanne Bump, who is now going to be a resident of the 11th Plymouth District. So that's all good. Now, is the Senate president still here? Where is he? Did he leave already? I'm not sure. Oh, he might have left. He left. Well, I was going to blame him because I was so late because I was working with my Senate co-chair on a bill we're looking to put out, and it was very late tonight. So I will not keep you. I've already kept you waiting so long, but thank you for all coming and happy to be here. Thanks. Thank you, Representative. And um, I want to now we're going to have our president of the AFL-CIO, who is our guest speaker up here, Steve Tolman. Thank you very much. Come on up here. Thank you, Senator. Mr. Chairman, I got two mics. One's for the cable, one's for the one that works. <clears throat> well, thank you very much. It's an honor to be here. Claire, let's give it up for Claire. Come on. There are, there are so many reasons to be here, and there's so many things I want to say. But first, as so many have touched upon, the signs, our friend Tommy Kennedy, I had the distinct honor when I got elected to the House of Representatives, I was on the taxation committee with Tom. He had been there and had a little more seniority and pretty much knew what was going on and he took me under his wing. And then I left to, for the Senate and Tommy came over to the Senate and I'll tell you, there was no finer person anyone could have ever served with. He cared about things. He was passionate in the caucus. And we just thank him for all he did for so many. And so it's quite an honor when I knew that this was going to be the first annual event in his honor. So for that, I am extremely proud. And to take it then to be honoring a guy who follows so much in the same vein as Tommy Kennedy as Archie, a guy that, remember, his first job is running in the fires when we're running out. But not just that, he's respected by everybody up at the State House, probably one of the most respected guys in the building because of the way he carries himself. 
He's always giving of himself. Archie Gormley is just truly what the labor movement is so proud of. Because in the labor movement, you're supposed to give of yourself, of course, in the job, give of yourself in the workplace to make sure justice is always in place, but then try to be active in the community. And the fourth and most important, of course, is to always to be a good parent. And Archie Gormley, I say congratulations for this award. You are so deserving. And I say from the bottom of my heart, in the 400,000 AFL-CIO members, thank you for your service. <clears throat> now, I'm the president of the AFL-CIO, and I said it's 400,000 people, and I'm honored to have a big guy right over here who's the state, fed pre state president and my vice president of the AFL-CIO, Richie McKinnon. Thank you, Rich. <clears throat> and I know his schedule. And Jimmy Pinkham, the head of the CLC down here, the Plymouth in Brockton, who does a great job. Once again, an active guy, always in the community. And so there's so many other people here having served with Mark Pacheco for so long. But I want to get into the message, brothers and sisters, ladies and gentlemen. When Representative Cassidy asked me to speak, <clears throat> I was really touched. Because when I knew Tommy, that's how I got to know Jerry. And nobody was more committed and de dedicated to helping Tommy and making sure that he was always ready and willing and, and set to be able to go. And Jerry, would we order Tommy tonight if I didn't come out and say thank you for all you did, thank you so much. <clears throat> and driving down here, I'll tell you I left Malden at 4 p.m. Our office is in Malden. I got here at about 6.20. It was a beautiful drive, though. It was a sunny day. It was cool, calm. I only got mad once. One guy cut me off. It was a great, great day. Now, you know I'm the president. I served in the House and the Senate, as I said, but I'm the president of the AFL-CIO, and everyone knows what the AFL-CIO stands for, right? Usually, heads roll, eyes roll back, and people start thinking AFL-CIO, American Federation of Labor Congress of Industrial Organization. I like to say that the AFL-CIO stands for what is right in America. And I believe that. And I want to touch on it just a little bit. Yesterday, with, Pres with President McKinnon, we were out in front of the State House, standing up against our governor on privatization, on the MBTA, when the House of Representatives gave him the right to go by the Taxpayer Protection Act It was a bad day because the Taxpayer Protection Act, which is the Pacheco Law, which everybody knows, 12 out of 14 times it worked on the MBTA. If they wanted to privatize, they had to prove it. So why in, why in God's name do we have to suspend a law called the Taxpayer Protection Act because a Republican gets elected governor? The previous governors didn't have a problem with it. 12 out of 14 times when they wanted to privatize, they were successful. So now the governor said right out, I don't want to privatize. I don't want to have people lose their job. And I quoted his quote yesterday, uh, it was yesterday, in front of the state house. Because that's just what they're doing. They went to the Commons Union and they broke them down and tried to take everything they could. Thank God they stood together and they stood up to them and they got a compromise. But believe me, they were looking at a lot of privatization. And the privatization they're talking about, they gave the money room at the MBTA to Brinks. Brinks, around the country, in particular in Chicago, Illinois, I think is the main state, they have all kinds of unfair labor practices and violations for not paying money, not paying the proper wages, not paying for overtime, not giving um, overtime days, no pension, they're lowering the pay raise, so that's what they did. They took good middle-class jobs and they gave them the brinks. Now, I don't know about you, but I don't think that's right. And you know how they did it? They hired a consultant. And this consultant went in and worked in the money room for about four months. And then they found out she worked for brinks. And she worked for another company. I forget the name. And you know how many companies bid on that privatization act? Two. We got to hold our governor accountable. That woman worked for both of them. And Briggs got the job. Now they, they went after the Carmen. And now, the, you know what they're saying to the machinist union? 
There's about 500 machinists on the MBTA. And ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, a lot of them live in this area. Because when I was knocking down here for my Senator Mike Brady, I hit a lot of the common. And they were with them. And that's made the difference in the election. So let me just get into it and tell you quickly. The machinists who break their backs, who don't just go and grab a pod off the table or off the rack to fix the buses, because those pots don't exist. They don't make them anymore, the equipment's so old. They have to weld pots together. They have to be innovative to get the pots. And, them, and still, with all these obstacles, bad weather, bad roads, our machinist on the MBTA are number one in the nation. That's a fact. That's a fact. Their bus breakdowns are at 13,000 miles. 13,000 miles. The closest to them is 6,000 miles back. I think it's New Jersey. So I ask you, why do they want to privatize? In a state where income inequality is its largest, largest in the nation, U.S. News and World Report said Massachusetts' greatest place to live. Education were number one. Healthcare were number two, thanks to our nurses and so many other medical professionals. And you know what we are in transportation investment infrastructure? 45th. 45th. We're not investing in it, but the, but the governor, the right wing, or the Republican governor, wants to do one thing put the employees working for less pay, without benefits, without health care. You want me to talk about GIC, the state pension? Are there many here on the state, on the health care, GIC? In the last 10 years, now some of that was under the Democrats, I'll say, in the last 10 years, the plan, family plan for health care for state employees, retired or not, has gone up $500 a month. They have transferred a full 9%, which is a lot more than 9% you're paying, every single month on state employees from the payer. The governor says he doesn't want to raise taxes, but for public employees, there's no holes barred. Do whatever you want. Ladies and gentlemen, the labor movement stands up against injustice. And I want to tell you, we had the machinist rally just yesterday. I'm speaking to the letter carriers in Yarmouth on Saturday. And in the afternoon on Saturday, the teachers are having a rally on the common. And I want to tell you another story about the great Yale University. They had an organizing drive three years ago there, and the adjunct professors, as you know, so many colleges have been doing. Three years ago, Yale University, the greatest in the nation, second only to Harvard, they say, has refused to come to the table to give them a contract. Now, this is the point of what I want to tell you tonight that because the adjunct professors had waited three years and now Trump gets elected, Yale's trying to hold off till they get a hold of the NLRB and then they're gonna say, they're gonna reverse the ruling so you can't organize adjunct professors. That's what they're holding out for. So eight solid adjunct students, graduate students who are adjunct professors went on a hunger strike at, in Connecticut at Yale University. Now I want to tell you the point to the story. A hundred hours into that hunger strike, think about yourself not eating for 24. Now think about 48 hours, you haven't eaten anything. Now we're at another 24 hours, get to the hundredth hour. You're in your fourth day. The right wing Republican, young Republicans at Yale University held a cookout right where the hunger strikers were. That's the evilness in the Republican Party, brothers and sisters. That's the evilness in the Republican Party is why we have to be more active in our Democratic Party. In the spirit of the leaders here, whether it's Senator Brady or Senator Kennedy or Representative Cassidy or Representative Dubois, we have to be more active. And I see so many of the silver hairs some don't even have here. But we have built a party, and somehow the Democrats, we think they don't work anymore. 
The Democratic Party is our mission, like it's the labor movement. And we have to be more powerful. We have to be more active. We have to stand together and have each other's backs. Because when I heard that story about the future leaders of America from Yale University, who did such a dirty trick is holding a cookout while real believers were holding a hunger strike, protesting inappropriate corporate action, I tell you what, I say we gotta build this party and send them a message. Are you with us? Yeah. I'll close with one other story. A very short story. This is for Paul Sullivan. Paul, I was in the hospital with Lisa recently. She was taking me on a tour of the hospital and we heard three surgeons talking about how good their job was and how they're successful. And the first one said, his biggest case, he took a concert pianist who lost three fingers and put him back together and six months later, the concert pianist was playing a concert for the Queen of England. The second one said, I had a young boy lose both his legs. We put the legs back on. It wasn't in six months, but in two years, he's running track in school. The third one said, well, those are impressive statistics. But I must tell you, I had a guy jump on a horse, start riding that horse on a train track as fast as he could, head first into a train, oncoming. He said the only thing that was left was a horse's ass and a glob of hair. And today, that guy's the president of the United States. God bless you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. Thank you. All right. You know, one of the things I have to do is thank Senator Pacheco for his work on that bill for private anti-privatization. I was a state worker for 40 years, and part of the reason I survived 40 years is the lack they couldn't privatize my job. Thank you, Senator Pacheco. So you want to say some words? Okay, um, let's get into honoring uh, Archie Gormley. So, one of the things I wanted to set up is a uh, award for public service, because one of the things that's really important to me is working for the state is public service and recognizing people that provide public service. That was a big thing for Tom. So we're honored tonight to uh, give an award to Archie Gormley. Thank you, Steve. And I also, I, I know Rich uh, McKinnon was recognized. I also want to recognize Bill Cabral, the treasurer for the PFFM, uh, secretary treasurer. Thank you for being here. And, and, I, and I know Representative Jim Cantwell is here as well. Thank you for coming down. And. Uh, my state delegation, unlike what you hear in Washington, we work together. So I'm going to invite my whole state delegation up here, Representative Cronin, Representative Cassidy, and Representative Dubois. And I want to thank our Mayor Bill Carpenter for arriving as well. And uh, words cannot express our friendship to Archie Gormley. Never mind the work you've done on behalf of all of us in to honor this award in Tom Kennedy's name. No one can ever fill Tom Kennedy's shoes, as you know, and he used to always make sure my tie was straight because it always leaned to the left a little bit and always recommended me getting a haircut, which I'm overdue tonight to get one. And, and he was a great mentor and friend, but he was like an older brother to myself. And I know to all of us, he was an unbelievable friend and mentor and advocate on behalf of our district. And Jerry Cassie, knew him better than all of us up here because he, he worked with him hand in hand and um, he could probably express better words than any of us on behalf of Tom Kennedy. But we're so grateful to be here to honor you, Archie. And we have some citations from the State House, so well, come on up, Archie. Archie. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And I also want to recognize another good friend uh, in uh, one of Tommy's cousins, Councilor Timmy Cruz is here. And the president, the president of the city council, I, you're still the president, right? Former. We always be the president in our hearts, right? <laughs> um, this is an official citation from the state senate. 
be it known that the Massachusetts Senate hereby extends congratulations to Archibald Archie Gormley Jr. in recognition of your recipient of the first annual Legislative Public Service Award by the Brockton Democratic City Committee, and it's signed by the President Stan Rosenberg, the clerk, and myself, Mike Brady, and there's no better one to have this honor than yourself. Thank you. All right, we have one from the uh, have one from the house also. Um, let's see. I, all right, thanks, Steve. Um, just before we read this, you know, uh, I've known Archie for a long time, and uh, he's just a wonderful guy, as we know. And uh, when they were saying that uh, they wanted to uh, do this uh, uh, citation, I, uh, this uh, uh, wonderful award, uh, I told Archie and. He said, are you he bleeping me? You know, I can't say it on TV, but uh, that's, his, that's his favorite line. I know Mike has uh, had that on his side, too, before. Um, but, uh, you know, he was a dear friend of Tom's. He was there when he died. He went up to uh, Canada when uh, he passed away. He was uh, just a phenomenal uh, uh, individual, Archie. Thank you. It's an honor and privilege to uh, read this citation uh, to you. From the House of Representatives, be it hereby known that all Mass House of Representatives office its sincerest, Congratulations to Archibald, Archie Gormley, Jr. I didn't know that. Uh, in recognition of your uh, uh, receipt of the first annual Legislative Public Service Award by the Brockton Democratic City Committee, uh, the entire membership extends its very best wishes and ex expresses the hope for future good fortunes and continuous success in all endeavors. Signed by Rep. Uh, Dubois, uh, Rep. Cronin, and myself, uh, and Speaker uh, DeLeo. Archie, congratulations. This is a small uh, award that's being made. We're making up a better one for you. This is from the city committee. We're going to be making up a plaque that's going to have uh, things come up and uh, making that up for you in the future. So we'll have a better one for you made up, but that's a temporary. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Car Mayor Carpenter. Well, good evening. It's a pleasure to be here, and it's, uh, I've got to tell you, I don't think there could be a better, the city committee could have picked a better title for a public service award than naming it after Tom Kennedy, because if I think of any one individual that epitomized the best of public service, it was Senator Kennedy. And I think that everyone up here, all the members of the delegation, uh, and I feel the same way, would be the first to tell you that the best work you do in public service are the things that no one ever sees. And that really was what Tom Kennedy was all about, and I know Jerry could attest to this better than anybody. You know, Senator Kennedy it helped people every day. And it's not the things that always make the newspaper is, is the best work that you do. So, Arch, I think this is a great tribute to receive a, uh, an award named after Senator Kennedy. So I've got to tell you briefly, when you're the mayor and you have to deal with the president of the firefighters union, it makes for an interesting relationship and friendship. So I've had Archie be against me in a campaign and I've had Archie be for me in a campaign. And I liked it a lot better when he was for me than when he was against me. So. But Arch, first of all, I think that over 30 years of riding on a truck answering 911 calls is enough to earn a public service award all by itself. Uh, and I tremendously respect the work and the uh, dedication and the risk that uh, all of the members of Local 144 take on a daily basis. Uh, but beyond that, a as a union leader, I, I don't know a better one than Archie. Um, you know, I've had him come in my office and behind closed doors, beat me up pretty good a few times. Uh, but somehow when he left, I still liked him, you know. And I think in all good two-way relationships, we always figure things out. And uh, if people deal with each other in good faith and are willing to give just a little bit, you figure out something that works for everybody. And I think that's the relationship that Archie and I have had for, for three and a half years. And uh, I truly appreciate it. And uh, there's a reason why Brockton uh, is not in the GIC, as I get a hard time about sometimes. Uh, and it's Archie. It's Archie. 
That's the only reason. It's not, it's not because of 1,300 school teachers. It's because the president of the Firefighters Union convinced the city council that we could work out a deal. And uh, I think, Archie, when people look back on your career, that'll be a, a testament to your leadership as a union leader. So I brought a citation, uh, and it reads, uh, be it known that the mayor of Brockton hereby extends his congratulations to Lieutenant Archie Gormley. I left the Archibald part out, Archie. Yeah. Uh, in recognition of receiving the Brockton Democratic City Committee's Thomas P. Kennedy Award for Public Service. For over 32 years, you've exhibited a tireless work ethic on behalf of the Brockton Fire Department. Whether at Station 3, as president of IAF, IAFF Local 144, or as a legislative agent for the professional firefighters of Massachusetts, your dedication, professionalism, and integrity is to be respected and commended at all levels. The City of Brockton is honored by your service, and we are proud that you embody all of the characteristics of a true champion. Therefore, it gives me great pleasure to present this citation to you as a symbol of our appreciation. And uh, Archie, on behalf of the residents of the city of Brockton, this citation is duly signed by the mayor of the city on this date, the 18th of May. And it's my distinct honor and privilege to present it to you. Thank you, Mayor. Claire, you want to say a few words? No? Wow, it's unbelievable. Uh, I'm honored, I'm humbled, but I'm proud. Uh, proud to have Tom Kennedy as my friend, my mentor, and a little lecturer every once in a while down the Cape Cod Cafe. <laughs> Not that we went there very often, but. But again, without Tommy, I probably would not have the position I'm in now, being legislative agent. When I first became president of the Brockton Firefighters, I used to go into the State House, sit in his office, we'd chit chat, and so many of the uh, delegation would come in throughout the State House and say hi to Tommy, and I got to meet them, see how the working was. So I learned from him and what he did. Uh, it's, I can't say much more. It's an honor to be his friend. I miss him. Uh, but we still have to move on, and that's what he wants us to do. We do have a great delegation from the uh, Brockton area. They are the best up there. They help me out every day. I can't thank all the members from the, uh, the uh, legislator for being down here, and I'm glad we're here to celebrate Tom Kennedy. He deserves it. Even though he's like me, we really don't want it, but here we are. Uh, on a personal note, I want to thank the uh, Kennedy, Cruz, and Cassidy family for allowing me to be a little part of it. I appreciate that. Uh, on another note, I want to thank my local, 144, because without them, I really wouldn't be able to get up here and do what I'm supposed to do. Thank you guys, you're the best. To our others that we belong to, the Professional Firefighters of Massachusetts. Richie, Billy, thank you very much. All our members, you guys are the greatest. I can't thank you enough for the help you've given me throughout the years. Thank you. Uh, and then my, uh, my other president that I work for, Jim Pinkham, and the Labor Council. Jimmy, thank you for your friendship. And again, these citations are unbelievable. But uh, the one thing we do have to remember, and I know a lot of us do, is that we can't do it without our family. And tonight I have with me my mother, Isabel. And Jerry was right. The saint of it all is my wife, Kathy. You know? I still don't know how she puts up with me, but thank you. We also have with, the, uh, with me tonight is my son, Michael, and his fiance, Jen, who in a couple weeks are going to make us uh, grandparents for the first time. Uh, our daughter, Melissa, she was unable to attend tonight, 
but she's another one that, that puts up with me and uh, I miss her here tonight, but I know she's always with us, so that, that too. Uh, Madam Auditor, you were too kind. I'll send you a check later on, okay? <laughs> but no, again, I want to thank you all. I really want to thank the, uh, the committee for uh, making this choice. It's unbelievable. I know there's a lot of people out there that deserve it. And uh, as I said, I'm so honored to receive this. Uh, as I said, Tom Kennedy and I, great friends. We talk. We did a few other things. Uh, but it was all well worth it. Uh, and I just ask if you could raise your glass and salute Tom Kennedy. Here. Tommy, I miss you. I love you. Take care of everybody down here for us. So on that note, I'll end it. And again, thank you very much. Thank you, Archie. You know, without Archie's, without Archie's help, this committee wouldn't be going where it is. I'd like to thank the Firefighters Union for uh, letting us use their union hall. It really helps us out to build a committee in Brockton. You know, I worked for the state for 40 years, so I know what it's like to be a public employee, and we've got a common heart there.